That's better. Yes, so before we begin, I would just like to acknowledge and pay respects to the traditional custodians of the lands upon which we're meeting today. For those of us here in person, that's the Wijibu Waiwa people of the Bunjalung Nation. I'd like to pay respects to elders past and present and extend that respect to other First Nations people who may be present here today with us. I recognise that this land will always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Before we get started, I just have a little bit of quick housekeeping. Uh, if you are joining us on Zoom today, please keep your microphone muted. And if you have questions, I do encourage you to ask them, but I would like you to ask them in the chat if you can. I'll be monitoring the chat while the presentation is ongoing and we'll have a Q&A at the end. And the seminar today is being audio and video recorded. And before we get going, I just want to give everyone a nice reminder to put in your diary our next seminar presentation on the 16th of March, 2023, is Simon Davison. We'll be presenting on low back pain presentations to rural, regional and metropolitan emergency departments. So without further ado, I would like to welcome you to our first uh, seminar, Rural Health Seminar of 2023. Uh, it's Dementia Inclusive Ballina, presented by Dr. Sabrina Pitt, Dr. Louise Horsmanshoff, and Miss Valerie Shash. Shake it. Thank you. Dementia Inclusive Ballina is a newly formed grassroots not for profit. This presentation will discuss the following topics What is a dementia inclusive community? What are the benefits? What do we do locally to support people living with dementia? who is involved locally, what is our local evidence and impact, and how you can get involved and make a difference to people with living with dementia in Northern New South Wales and communities beyond. We will also link local action to global action by demonstrating the importance of using an international standard framework for dementia inclusive communities to achieve dementia inclusive communities. Val will also talk about what it is like to live with dementia prevention and how she influences the work that is done. So I would like to welcome you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Right, I'll just go like that. Yeah. Right. All right. Thank you, Hayley, for your uh, warm introduction. And um, hello, everybody. Um, it's a little bit strange to be back at my old workplace to um, present, but it's lovely. Um, I've missed it. And so I'm really grateful to have the opportunity to talk to you about a topic that's very close to my heart, um, people living with dementia. Um, I got involved through Louise Horsman Hoff, who unfortunately isn't here today because she's on a well-deserved break um, and had a surprise holiday. So, um, so good luck um, being on a holiday. <laughs> um, so meet the team behind the scene. Um, we are a large group of volunteers that spend um, our time uh, running this not-for-profit. Um, everybody brings different skills to the table and it varies from people that are uh, nurse practitioners to academics to people with lived experience, um, educational experience, um, carers and also um, pastoral care workers, um, physiotherapists, TAFE and um, we have recently welcomed uh, a psychologist to the team as well who is just retired so that's um so I'm really grateful for everything um, people do we always need more people so for those people on zoom and in the room here we'd love to um, welcome you on board if you um, want to be involved in any way shape or form so just a little bit about dementia inclusive Bellina 
So the structure. So what we have is we have something called like a steering group. So we've, we've became a not-for-profit in 2021, which was quite a, 2022, which was quite a large process, um, but definitely uh, worth it because it makes our life a lot easier. We were under the auspices of um, DAISY, which we were very grateful for. It is a lot quicker to be around not-for-profit for other people that are thinking to um, do something in their own communities um, beyond Ballina and Northern Rivers. So we have two co-chairs and we are very lucky to have Val here, who is the co-chair. And so the co-chair also always needs to be a person living with dementia. That's part of um, our uh, rulings charter. Um, then we have an advisory group, and it's not an advisory group in the sense that you think it is an advisory group, but it's an advisory group that only consists of people living with dementia or carers. And so they actually advise us on what, uh, what you know, the committee should be doing or should not be doing, which is very um, valuable because they really bring the other perspective that you can't see if you don't, you know, if you're not in the situation. So... That's a very important group. Um, the chair of the advisory group is um, usually a carer, and that person attends then the steering committee meetings and gives feedback. So currently we have around 70 members and we're growing. So for example, we had the music master um, two weeks ago and a carer uh, lunch. And we, every time an event is organized, we get a few new um, members on board, which we're very, um, grateful with um, but I talked to you a bit more about what we do so it's a it's a registered um, charity um, again we've had help from uh, from accountancy firms and from people with skills in setting up a charity um, to to get to this stage so it's it's really a coalition of individuals like it's businesses it's uh, communities it's organizations um, and anybody that wants to support a dementia inclusive community. And so the Ballina Shire has also been instrumental in, uh, in the setting up of this. So initially they were part of the steering committee, but once it became more formalized, they had to um, step back, but still are involved and endorsing the work that we do. Um, we really use Dementia Australia as well to set up uh, our not-for-profit so that's something if other people want to look at that the Dementia um, Australia website has very clear uh, resources on how you can go about this as well. So our aim is of course to um, to uh, make our communities inclusive. I'm just saying that there's a make a big impact of our professional slides and charts uh, we should make that make it a big impact in our local community for people with dementia. <laughs> so that's so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so what we try, so we've got three major terms, major principles. They are respect, support, and empowerment for people living with dementia and their carers. Okay. Um, so what we do, what we do is we raise awareness in the community and we take action to, um, you know, make it easier for people living with dementia. And I will come with some examples of how we do that. So our work is led by people living with dementia and their carers, as I said before, um, through the advisory group, through VEL, but also we have weekly activities and people feedback what they actually want and what they need. So it's really, really nice. Um, we also work, we've worked with council to remove physical and social barriers and we continue to do that. So one of the things that we started to do before COVID uh, hit was we went through a lot of uh, local businesses got and asked people, so we just go in, had a chat and asked them, are you interested in your staff getting some uh, dementia education training? And so we had a list, but then, you know, we couldn't do it. And with all the stuff that has been happening, but that's something as an example that, you know, to make it easier in the community for people with dementia to go out and go into shops and people understanding how to uh, communicate and approach um, people. So uh, dementia inclusive communities. So I just wanted to give you a few characteristics of what we mean by that. So it's community-based projects that we run. Um, it's about reducing stigma and myths about dementia. 
It's about promoting uh, respect and empathy, like I talked before, when we um, hopefully go out to the businesses and talk to them. Um, we, we say that people with dementia and their carers must be involved. Um, and it's about making a positive change for those living with dementia and also improvements to the physical environment and ease of access, sa safety and navigation. And it is a benefit to all. So there, there are lots of stakeholders. Some are old stakeholders, some are newer stakeholders, um, and there is probably a few more. But I just wanted to acknowledge everybody that has been at some point or still or is still involved in, uh, in uh, dementia inclusive Ballina. So I won't list them all out, but you can see it's a whole uh, scala of organizations and um, we're, we're growing in the sense of that we also start to reach out to the more non-health um, businesses, which is nice. So just uh, spread the word. So this is my favorite slide because this is really uh, the crux I feel uh, for what we do at the moment, every Wednesday between 10 and 12 a.m., there is at the Aero uh, Club in Bellana near the airport, um, we hold uh, activities for people living with dementia and it's always busy. So it's really nice. If you know anybody that wants to attend, um, I've put down the email or you can contact me. There's also a phone number. Um, yeah, so please spread the word that people, we have people all the way from Iluka down to Casino, from Wine Wine that actually come and uh, attend at the moment, which signifies there's a real need for this. Some people actually used to go all the way to Twi to um, go to activities for people uh, living with dementia, and they were really grateful because it actually saved them a lot of money in the sense of, um, you know, transport costs as well, so... So I just want to give you a, uh, an example of what we do. Um, so next week we'll do games and bingo. Uh, we will have someone that will come and talk about connecting with your emotions. We often have art activities and also regular singing with Joan and Peter. I also want to acknowledge uh, at the moment the Northern New South Wales LHD Health Promotion Unit. Uh, we just heard this afternoon that we get some funding to run some uh, gentle exercise classes uh, with our people. So it's really nice to um, yeah, use that funding because um, we are running obviously on volunteers. So any funding is uh, greatly acknowledged. So thank you very much for letting us um, do that. So other examples are drumming, which is a very, uh, the drumming activity is so much fun. The people like it. Everybody has a smile on their face, I've been told. Um, and so that's just a few other examples. The other one, which is a bit early, but we take this very serious. We've done this uh, last year in 2022. We, were, we had it cancelled, I think, three times because of COVID. But we persevered and we had a really good, strong group of um, people that organised this event. And we're going to do it again under the leadership of Anne Mohead, which most of you probably know around here. She's the chair of our um, group. And so it will be held at the 22nd uh, of September this year and the Saturday. So we'll have a professional and one for the community as well. So um, keep that free. Another example is that we had um, some money for seniors week to run a, uh, a music master this year, which we have run three years ago before COVID. And now we were lucky to do it again. So, so it is a lot of fun. You know, I like to go because I think it's fun. Other things we do is dementia cafe, dancing, uh, digital literacy training, and there is so much more. So I think I've painted a picture of what we're trying to achieve here and how it does make a difference to our people locally. We have usually between, I don't know, 20 and 30 people turn up at least for events. But if we have bigger events, then um, more people might turn up. So how can you get involved? Um, I think people get this slide so they can look at it later. but. Um, these are the contact numbers. You can always check out our website. Um, have a chat with us. We have also an, a quarterly newsletter that you might be able to use. Um, spread the word in the community. And that's, you know, it can be as simple as that if you don't want to do anything else. Just please talk about, you know, that there are services out there or social services, okay? And we also look for financial local business sponsors. 
Um, one that is a good one is uh, get educated. So dementiafriendly.org.au, um, you can become a dementia friend. And um, that is uh, a way for people that don't know anything about dementia to have a look. It's, it's worth having a look at that. Um, so because it's a research seminar, I did want to plug the pitch for what we actually do. The next one is uh, a little uh, example of uh, a research project that we have done. So because we are starting, it's actually an evaluation project. So um, what we did was we got funding from the Northern British Community Fund to do a digital training um, program for people with dementia. Um, and it was a pilot study because we wanted to build that out later. So we're briefly going to talk about the background, the objective, the methods, the results, and the conclusion. I also want to acknowledge um, Mel O'Reilly, um, who works for Dementia Outreach, because she actually uh, was instrumental in pulling this all together. I also want to uh, acknowledge the Be Connect. Be Connected Good Things Foundation, because they provide very valuable resources for us to have um, produced actually training manuals for uh, the people that participated. And I also want to thank all participants and members, of course, that took part. So um, what's, uh, what was the background to this uh, little study? So what we had was we had COVID-19 um, and they were calling for the importance of building recovery and resilience among people living um, or amongst anybody really. So we obviously said, okay, we really want to do something for our group. So we put in a funding application and got um, the money to do it. Uh, and social isolation is, of course, a significant challenge for this group, especially be, during COVID that became even more evident. Um, so the hypothesis was building digital literacy skills may help reduce social isolation. So uh, the objectives of the program were to develop actually the program because we didn't have anything, to measure some, uh, some characteristics before and after the program and see if it had any st statistical impact, and then to provide recommendations for the future program development. Am I going on a good pace? Do I have to slow down or faster? Fine, yeah. Okay, um, so the methods uh, briefly were that the digital training program was developed and conducted. Um, initially, we were going to do it face to face, but again, because of COVID, we had to pivot. So it was really quite difficult to, you know, teach digital literacy training programs if you can't see people. But Mel, again, it has been fantastic. So people, so what we really did was the training needs were actually tailored to the individuals. And that's so important. And that's what I find sometimes really hard with funding because it's often about the numbers. It's often about, you know, the, the, the bigness of it and the standardization. But sometimes the standardization can't happen because everybody's at a different skill level. And it actually does take time with groups that need more attention to get them over that hurdle. And if we are just going to give one, you know, straight line, it's not going to happen. So, um, but uh, we were able to do this with the funding we got. And uh, so we had 12 core topics. Um, you can read them out. You can see them here. I'll just say, you know, for example, email, Wi-Fi, uh, video calling, social media. So those were the things that, um, we, we would go through with people. And after a while, I attended a couple of Zoom sessions as well, Zoom training sessions. And it was actually fun because, you know, the people um, after that, they created WhatsApp groups. So those groups are still functional. People are now able, you know, they don't, they don't need, uh, you know, this committee or the training people to actually, you know, communicate. So it's really nice that they're just doing what they're doing and, you know, and yeah, and connecting with each other and they can share without, you know, other people um, being there. So we had uh, 52 participants that uh, completed the uh, pre-survey. We had 39 that completed the post-survey. And I can guarantee you, even that was very hard work to get that up, but we managed to do it. So, um, uh, so what we found, even though the numbers are really, really small, I am giving you the statistical significance uh, increases here. So what we found was that there was this, uh, an increase in self-reported confidence in using uh, technology, um, also in using computers and other uh, tasks. 
and the most significant tasks are listed here. They all went up, but those were the, the keeping in contact with family and friends, accessing news online, attending meetings, like I was saying about the Zoom and the WhatsApp, and also a slight increase in telehealth appointments. Um, the other thing was uh, the applications that went up in the usage uh, from pre to post. So Zoom doubled, uh, WhatsApp went up, as you can see, and FaceTime went up. So we also used the validated friendship uh, scale tool. So that's a measure of social inclusiveness because that's really why we wanted to do this. Um, and it demonstrated a highly significant uh, improvement after the program. So I should have given you the percentages, but you can ask me later if you want to. Um, so 47% agreed that after the training that they now use technology uh, more to talk to their family and friends. And 40% also agreed that they uh, now use technology more to talk to the healthcare providers, as we could see before. Um, and also there was an increase in talking with lo loved ones or friends via di digital technology in the last four weeks. So I think we must acknowledge that, you know, in the context of COVID, there was probably a forced element that people um, took it up. But the, the question I would have had, like, if we didn't have COVID, um, would we have seen the same results as we have now? Um, I don't know, but that's, you think so? Yes. And people were really, really interested. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, those mics are working for everybody or? Oh, um, Fel was just saying that um, she thinks it does make a difference because people want to still know now about how to use the technology effectively um, after COVID or not during COVID. So thank you, Fel, for that uh, insight. Um, so has the training had an impact? We believe so. It's reduced social isolation among carers and of people living with dementia increased uh, digital literacy skills and confidence um, and we have used this to um, to apply for funding because you know it's such a strong result and um, we are uh, for people in the room that want to do something with this the be connected website has actually really good um, funding opportunities and they're small pots of money and but you can use them to continue your, your training uh, I think I might leave this because I think I've said um, most things already. So I might just highlight that the informal support mechanisms went up. I think that's an important one for the people. Okay. Um, so now I'd like to hand over um, to Val to talk about lived experience. So we're talking about, you know, getting educated. I think the best way to get educated is uh, for Val to speak. Um, what her experience has been. So thank you, Phil. How do I, how do I advance slides? You go that way? Yes. You're back. Right, you thank you. No, I'll be right then. Thank you. Sorry. Good afternoon. Um, I'm honoured to have this opportunity to present to you those here and virtually online. I also endorse the welcome to country given. My role in the Dementia Inclusive Ballina is, in, in, is um, incorporated as a co-chair. The quote I've put in, dementia does not discriminate. If you meet one person with dementia, you've met one person with dementia. We are still all to be valued. Include us as individuals with a disease. This group was first run by FSG, then DAISY Auspices, and now being incorporated with charitable status, we stand alone. I'm on the steering committee. I challenged the group in 2019, where do you see us in three years? I also happen to be on the National Dementia, National Dementia Friendly Communities, and I said, I'm going to have to stand aside because I have a conflict of interest. And so we received national re recognition for the name of the group at the time, and that's an absolute coup. 
initially I was very, very hands-on, but we have such a great committee with such diverse and such depth of talent, I'm really as a consultant now. But you need to have a person living with dementia as a co-chair to oversee the committee's machinations and to meet the real needs of grassroots of people living with dementia and their associates. Otherwise, it smacks of paternalism. Real needs can be very different to perceived needs. During COVID, we didn't fold. We went online as shown and are thriving, but more are welcome. I'm on the Ballina Shire Disability Access Reference Committee, so I'm cross-pollinating. I also gave valued advice on the Sachs Inter Institute research too. Today, I will tell you how it is living with and beyond a dementia diagnosis. I pray none of you are the three in one, sorry, one in three predicted of getting dementia in your lifetime. Last time I looked, it was one in four. Last time I looked, it was 130 types. But it's, it's, anyway, we're gone. I was diagnosed with dementia in 2015. Having dementia gives you superpowers. Yeah, becoming invisible in plain sight. Dementia is the leading cause of death of women in Australia and second in men. It's the umbrella term of 100 types described. It is not normal ageing. And it's more, as you'll hear from my things, it's more than memory. And it's an umbrella term. So there are four main types, Alzheimer's, and there's six types of Alzheimer's, vascular, frontal temporal dementia, and Lewy bodies but sometimes it's mixed, and that's me. Toxic Alzheimer's 3, mainly reversible, and an ongoing vascular component. Uh, by the way, I'm a citizen scientist. I can still read a scientific paper of any genre and give you back six points in plain speak. I'm a community educator for best outcomes, often pioneering outside the square. I practiced physiotherapy for 32 years with family and farming. I'm the first acupuncturist physio in public health in Australia. My specialty became complex pain because pain like dementia is no respecter of persons. I was a peer to 30 odd GPs and a dozen specialists. I had a valued reputation as Val the physio. I really struggle now when I'm not believed. I find it abuse. As a consultant physio in a local aged care facility, including a locked dementia ward, I successfully treated the pain. Dr. Susan Curl presented a published findings in 2017 endorsing my clinical experience. The lived experience is way different from knowing about dementia. So different. I cringe now at some of the best advice I've given. I thought I'd never get dementia, not familial, but in the early 50s, odd symptoms happened. I now refer them to rat gnaws. They're probably silent strokes. I lost the ability to map breed, become clumsy, clumsy, and of pain syndrome. No longer could multitask or public speak without notes. Personality changes, oh my. I became loud, potty-mouthed, bold, opinionated, bling-wearing, free-spending, labile, can't sequence, getting lost on a farm I know well, dual incontinence, choking issues, no longer reliable. My husband knew I was losing the plot. Others thought I was depressed. I then had eight hours of not knowing who I was. That got everybody's attention. I also have profound hidden deficits. These are centrally driven. Core temperature issues. Over 27 degrees, I sweat profusely, but I wear bed socks at night. My blood pressure is volatile a centrally driven pain syndrome, centrally driven sleep apnea. Get sleep tested, don't assume. I say to an anaesthetist, you watch me or I'll give you gray hair. I struggle to go from bright to dark and depth perception is tricky. I present well, but my brain battery goes flat with brain fog. I need to rest to recharge. I now struggle with name finding, recognizing faces and context. 
Now big memory gaps. Personal care is patchy. Webs to pack. Medication taking is now quite creative. Easily distracted. Not being able to se sequence. No longer reliable. I've lost the ability to play the piano, but I can still sing loud and in tune. Not giving my body an opinion, I just keep on keeping on. The apathy is new, I've become quiet. It's easy to be a hermit, just watching on. Not, not a locked in zombie yet. But it takes so much time to do things. So frustration is the norm. I aim to do the best I can with what I have control over. The deficits are locked like silverfish, a tax on a garment, some obvious, but a lot of the garment is still intact. Having massive cognitive reserves helps, but for how long? God knows. But my eternal future is wonderful, thanks to Jesus. The diagnosis happened August 2015, CT, MRI, SPECT scans, then on to neuropsych assessments. Bilateral, mild to moderate frontal, temporal and parietal lobes affected. The specialist, the specialist physician said to me, I am so, so sorry, you have dementia. But the diagnosis was a relief to me because I knew that I was losing my beautiful mind. He prescribed Aricept, a wonder drug for me. I continue on it with benefit. It cleared the brain sludge. Pain syndrome stopped, but the side effects, insomnia, bowel explosion, hypomania. But a clear brain meant I could work around these. I used hair analysis. I reduced many toxic ratios and improved my brain capacity. Then I found the, a functional integrated holistic medical team in 2018. They found allergies to healed my gut, found out about the centrally driven sleep apnea. I worked really hard at sleeping well. I got my smarts back. My previous men's IQ had gone down to 90. It's now sitting about 120. 2018 scans showed improvement. But now, now the original dementia diagnosis is doubted. But I know I'm only 36 hours in front of this disease, like my grandma who had type 1 diabetes. I need to stay on my protocol. I'm running the marathon of my life. The flood trauma with mould issues and major stresses and having COVID last year is taking its toll. At diagnosis, I was not given a referral anywhere or any support, just a script. Why not model the breast cancer supports the person scheme at diagnosis? Like a caseworker from diagnosis ongoing for the journey to help with all the paperwork, the aged care, the ACAP processes, the legal affairs, the care providers, et cetera, et cetera. Ideally, a go bag, a package with at least the dementia guide the Dementia Australia Helpline, my 1800, 500, 100. Flyers of the local dementia inclusive group, a link to a support person, testimony of people living well after a dementia diagnosis to be given at every diagnosis for best outcomes. This is such an overwhelming time. People need their go bag to refer to later. It's really important to give people hope and support keeping them alive and from self-harm. I've been part of a research group as a person living with dementia giving insights and paid for my work. I have six weekly psychologist visits ongoing. Get educated. With the Dementia Friendly Community Group we saw listed, with the MOOC in Tasmania, with Dementia Australia, their resources, DTA, Learn about the language to use, how to be inclusive and not discriminate, often through ignorance. Dementia is a disability. It is our human right to remain valued part of our society, not locked away. Dementia-friendly communities, a national body, will help you to start a group in your community, as, with, as we did with DIB. Become a dementia friend. 
become a dementia advocate. I'm part of Step Up for Dementia Research. Please sign up as controls are needed. I thank God for Dementia Alliance International. They have a memorandum of understanding with Dementia Australia. DAI works with the World Health Organization and Human Rights and Dementia as a Disability. Weekly work to peer-to-peer -peer support group is ongoing. I was a chair of the, of the Brain Health Hub. We studied what helped cognition from Dr. Braille, Dale Bredesen at all. Research since published. Hundreds of us in 47 countries, many young onset dementias, improve cognitively, socially, and many are still influential dementia advocates. Functional integrated medicine with a holistic approach is 21st century thinking. It focuses on reducing inflammation in the brain via healthy gut, mind, heart, and spirit with a personalized daily protocol tweaking optimal health. Other buzzwords are the mind diet, recode, and cognoscopy. After diagnosis, um, I outed and became invisible. A local pariah in my community. Yeah. Firstly, I did all the legal work while of sound mind, enduring power of attorney and guardianship, especially the living will, the do not resuscitate. We all need a living will. I'll educate my community where I'm known as respected as Val the physio. So in 2016, I went to the local Ballinor Information Centre. What have you got? I found out about DEBA and the Dementia Outreach Service as well. I'm also a DAC, Dementia Australia Advisory Committee member since 2017. I bring a rural view. I've done a YouTube video on what I tell my 40-something year old self to prevent or stave off dementia symptoms with another 18 points. That's for another whole session. So summary, keep active. Inflammation, inflammation is the, is the big one through dementia. You find the source and stop or reduce, especially gut. Sugar, oh, the crap, carbonated, reconstituted, artificial and processed. And I'm sorry, alcohol, no safe level for a vulnerable brain. Sleep, eight hours for autophagus, neurogenesis, neuroplasty, go to sleep on an empty stomach. Oh, now I've given an extra three minutes, sorry. <laughs> Early diagnosis with supportive interventions of body, mind and spirit gets best outcomes. <clears throat> we need a dementia educated community, be supportive and inclusive of vulnerable people, especially those with dementia. This presentation has been an enjoyable challenge. I still have a voice. I take every opportunity to educate people. I'm on the ABC iView. You can't ask that on dementia. I'm also with the To Whom I May Concern production with the Australian Chamber Orchestra in Sydney next week. Two sold out performances. I've presented nationally and internationally, lots of stuff on social media about me. Finally, I will remember how you've made me feel long after I've forgotten what you've said. So be kind, speak kind, act kind, forgive, laugh loudly and often. Do everything in your capacity to stave off and prevent dementia. You are worth it. For me, I'll keep turning up, doing the best with what I've control over. I'll choose joy when I can and eat worms when I can't. But God has me in the palm of his hand. I'm loved and supported and now included in my community. Thank you. Last Just two minutes. Because <laughs> I didn't know how much time we had, but I'll, this round won't take long. Um, I wanted to talk to you briefly about some other work that's going on on global scale. So um, I'd like to call it the link local action to global action and using, using an international standard. So I've been very fortunate to um, 
have been involved with aging societies work uh, across the globe with people. And I think, so um, a standard has just been published in 2022. It took three years to uh, design this standard. But I think the importance of those ones are, um, even though they can be really hard to access, unfortunately, I'll be honest about that. I think um, the importance of that work is that it actually also translates to other um, countries. So if we talk about China or Thailand or, you know, um, African countries or other countries where um, they haven't uh, developed uh, their dementia inclusive communities as much, it really gives them ideas about, you know, what, what has happened in the world. So it is like a best practice um, guideline that um, it has been, um, yeah, published last year. So I want to acknowledge, uh, again, uh, people locally, and a lot of people don't know this, that they've actually have uh, input, have put input into um, these national or these international standards. So Val, for example, has looked at the framework at the time, has given feedback about things what, um, you know, are useful or not so useful, or, you know, what needs to be um, more approached. So, for example, um, I was involved with an aging workforce guideline. We had nothing about dementia, and it was only because of the, the work that happens here that, you know, we started to talk about it. And then, you know, you started looking across the world and you see there's a couple of countries or a few countries that talk about dementia in the workplace because our workforce is getting older and we're actually not really thinking yet about what this will mean um, as, you know, as we progress in our society. So, um, we, we have been able then to put in, for example, a few clauses in the standards around um, what you can do to um, if you would have people that um, are living with dementia and are still working. That's just an example. Um, the thing, uh, the other thing was that before we became incorporated, uh, we did write a case study. And again, th those are things that can be examples for other countries to say, okay, um, so they're doing this in a rural area in, you know, in Australia. So it gives them just some practical ideas around what they can do in their countries. So obviously we're not the only ones, there's other countries that do lots of stuff. Um, but I think that's that connection that uh, we'd like to see um, increase. So within Australia, there's a public consultation on these um, international standards that if you're uh, willing to provide a comment on, we would be very grateful. Uh, it closed on the 23rd of March. A link uh, is provided here. Given the time, I, I wanted to actually talk more about how this uh, uh, framework would apply to dementia inclusive Bellana, but I think the time is, we wanted to give you so much information. I think. There's only so much we can do, but I'm happy to talk to you separately if you want or give you a copy to look at um, if, for, um, if you want to give some comments. So we'd love to work with anybody in this area as well around, you know, the policy work, um, because we do know from our local people what they feel and what they need. So, you know, we've, we've um, submitted some to the Royal Commission, for example, um, we've done work for the Sachs Institute on uh, education and training standards in dementia. And um, so, for example, and another thing, when the floods happened again or when it started raining again, you know, I just woke up in the middle of the night and I went like, oh, what am I going to do? You know, you know, I don't like it when it rains and it's getting worried about the floods again. And instead of just, you know, being anxious or I thought, you know what, I'm just going to channel this. And we just I just had a great meeting. Um, with people with, you know, with the dementia, with the digital training, I think we did. And so then I rang my colleagues and I said, look, why don't we just write some for the conversation? So if we can get this more out there, you know, people are more aware of like, you know, we forget people in a disaster, um, you know, um, yeah, situation as well. We, who's going to think about the person living with dementia who's living alone? Like, seriously so I think it was great to to channel my negative energy positively to write that with my colleagues and um and initially I would always when there was a flood somewhere else happening I would go and join their communities and I would post it and I yeah but it happens so often so I think I need to do that a bit more but these are the little things um that we believe helps in improving um our local communities. Uh, yeah, so here are the contacts. Um, 
where you can um, contact us. And I think that's all I wanted to say for now. But yeah, please reach out if we can work with you, we'd love to. And thank you for the opportunity to speak. And thank you, Val, for being so honest. It was lovely. Thank you, Sabrina and Val. That was really wonderful. Thank you. Um, I would like to invite you both briefly back to the front. And I just want to open to the floor if anyone has any questions um, before we do get into that. Just because we don't have the floor mics on today, um, if someone asks a question, if you would just like to repeat it for the people on yeah. Zoom. Thank you. Does anyone have a question, please? Uh, yes, please. Thanks so much for bringing us a lovely presentation. Um, I, I, I noticed in your list of um, engaged groups was the allied health community. And, and I, I'm wondering how um, much work you may do with allied health and, in, and the experience of that when uh, part of the diagnosis about anyone who made the comment that not any services were provided. I mean, obviously you have your own physiotherapy background, but were there other services that had been engaged or even kind of looking to um, venture aspect of what's going to be done? I'm sure it's had, sorry, I've been asked whether there's allied health services. Um, I slipped through the hoop, um, but I know now that, uh, that uh, there's often uh, dementia, people with dementia are given physiotherapy and OTs are involved. It's all part of their care packages, it, but you need to know about it to ask for it. So this should also be, perhaps you can include the little flyer in our go bag to say, we have, this is what's available, please consider us as OTs and physios and allied, allied health podiatrists as well, yes. I can answer it for someone um, not with dementia, that it is really hard to get um, an allied health package because I'm experiencing that myself at the moment with, um, yeah, to get the, uh, we know what we need for the person, um, but it's it's a lot of hard work. And I think if, if you're, if you struggle, um, then it's really hard to get it organized in itself. So if, and, and I know, um, you know, the system is so does fail. So I wouldn't know what other people feel. Yeah. Um, but uh, the Allied Health and Nursing here, um, that's the relationship with TAFE as well, with Gabriel Roda. So you probably know her, but I think that's um, where we're working with as well. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Forgot to repeat the question. Okay. I have a question from Zoom. Are there enough allied health clinicians available in the area? I, th I think it's an allied health question. Um, Val, do you want to answer it? I, do you want to start or do you want me to? No, well, um, I, I, okay. I, look, d d we can't answer this because we are more like an inclusive uh, group that's trying to make feel people at home and welcome. So I think I'd be talking out of school to say yes or no, I couldn't. But again, from my personal experience, it's hard to make that link um, for sure. And also the funding is really hard. So for example, if you want to have uh, an exercise physiologist, it seems to be really hard for some reason to get the funding through at this point. So we have someone um, but the costs are also astronomical. So I think there is a lot to be done. So I think we can always have more allied health professionals moving up here. That would be awesome. Yeah. Don't, don't forget the at least five free um, um, referrals to various aspects, including exercise physiologists and, and ITs and physios as part of the um, Medicare. Do we have any more questions? Oh, and I was just, you talked about the mm -hmm. Is that just a concept that you use? Or is that a really big concept here? Here is this magic. 
Is it actually the will of the house? I would like to say it is, um, but it's not here. You have to work together. That's right. So this was on as a handout, and this was a handout. What we've been achieving. This is a brag about what we've achieved, and this is visions, values, and goals. Okay. So no further question. All right. Well, I just want to say thank you one more time to Sabrina and Val for sharing, for sharing about the work you do, sharing about your experience and the vulnerability um, and the strength. So thank you. Thank you, everyone.